Hello, my name is Chris Perry from the Dragon Corporation, and today I'm going to be talking about the excess soil regulations, a summary and overview of the new regulations. Just a little bit about myself. I am a professional geologist here at the Dragon Corporation. I've been here for quite a few years, and I've been involved with a number of different types of activities, including soil management, phase one, phase two work, uh, soil and groundwater remediation, uh, subslab vapor uh, investigations and mitigation and decommissioning projects. So the focus today is on the new regulations that came out at the beginning of December of 2019 from the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. The new regulation is the on-site and excess soils management, referred to as OREG 40619. Today, what we're going to cover is the definition of ex excess soils, why the regulation was developed, overview of the regulations, when the regulation comes into effect, what you need to know for 2020, and some recommended action items. If you want to look at the entire regulation, there's a link here that I've attached. So what is excess soils? Excess soils is soil that really is going to be generated during a construction project and it's not going to be used at the site. So the decision is made that you have to take this material, this excess soil, and move it to another site. So right now in Ontario, the estimates have been as high and higher of 25 million cubic meters of excess soils generated every year. And the idea here is to move this excess soil to another site to serve another purpose, which is a beneficial reuse. So really what I want to talk about is why the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks developed these regulations. And it comes down to um, trying to focus on reusing these soils locally, properly managing these excess soils, and ultimately tracking these soils. And there's benefits to doing this. One is to potentially reduce greenhouse gas emissions for transporting soil. The focus would be to try and find a reuse site that is nearby so there's less trucking time trucking costs less fuel and the regulations themselves we're hoping will uh, decrease the amount of uh, illegal dumping that happens because there'd be a lot of planning up front so you already know what to do with the soil you don't have to try and be in a panic and try to find a place to put this soil so the other thing other benefits we're going to get here is if there's less uh, distance being traveled to these reuse sites, there, there's less trucks on the road, the, um, we're reducing the amount of clean soil that would be going to a landfill, and less fuel costs, less time on the road, um, there's a savings to doing this. So one of the things that comes out, or a number of points that come out in the regulations, is the MECP wanted to make it clear and add definitions to these beneficial reuse uh, rules. They also wanted to help in giving guidelines on how to use the generic risk-based standards and they've developed some newer risk-based standards that are applicable to the excess soils regulation and I'll be talking about those later and clarify when the excess soils can be reused. And there is some simplification um, replacement of, of certain um, permit approvals that we had in the past and there's a change with that and I'll get into that a little bit later. The um, other benefit of doing this uh, is to have impro improvement on the planning stage of reusing these soils and this is particularly true when we're looking at large quantities of material and sites that may be riskier and we're really trying to make sure that this whole process of dealing with excess soils um, make sure that we are dealing with soils that are defined as excess soils and they are going to the site and everything is being done following the guidance which, which is in the regulation. The larger sites in the future as this regulation is developed, the larger sites with over 10,000 cubic meters will need to register those sites and there'll be some um, record keeping tracking of, of those quantities of soil as far as where do they go at a reuse site. And there is an, a restriction that will be coming up that uh, 
the goal would be not to send clean soils to landfills in the future. And the rules do not apply, and the new regulation does not apply if we're talking about hazardous waste or asbestos waste, uh, typical operations that occur under the Aggregate Resources Act for pit and quarry operations and movement of topsoil. And they would not apply if you're dealing with a pit extraction operation, or um, they would not apply if you're looking at putting soil on the bed of a surface water body. So the Regulation itself is going to be phased in over the next few years, and this is a, an outline of, of those changes. Uh, for this July of 2020, we have reuse rules, the risk-based standards, waste designation approvals changes. Uh, a couple of years down the road, we'd be looking at tracking, testing the soils and registrations, and then um, the restriction on the landfills. And there's some grandfathering provisions uh, for projects, large infrastructure projects that have started and those would come into play over the next few years as well. So what do you need to know now as we're coming up to the first um, important deadline or important date within the new regulation? And that's July 1st of this year, the reuse rules, the standards, waste designation and approvals rules, um, they're all coming into place and I'm going to go into detail about each one of these. So first is the reuse rules. What do you need to know about these rules? And the soil is beneficially reused. So you're going, to, you're going to find someone that will accept this excess soils. The soil will be dry. The site that uh, you've identified as the reuse site knows what they're getting. They've consented in writing to accept the soils. And when they go to these reuse sites, they'll be used within the next two years for what are the beneficial purposes. Um, infrastructure sites can use as much time as needed to complete those particular projects. The risk-based standards or the generic risk-based standards, if we're dealing with smaller quantities of 350 cubic meters or less, we deal with the generic standards that are under the current ORA 15304. These are the typical standards, Table 1, Table 2, Potable Water Conditions, Table 3, Non-Potable Water Conditions. Then we have the new generic risk-based standards for excess soils where we're dealing with quantities that are above 350 cubic meters. And those standards, those tables are set up and defined as table 2.1, 3.1. The first thing I noticed when I looked at the new risk-based standards is that for the hydrocarbons, the criteria is more stringent. So, for example, you could be looking at table two different hydrocarbons and the new table 2.1 um, concentrations or standards that would be allowed are significantly less. Uh, for metals, there's really not that much of a difference with the metals concentrations from what I've reviewed. So you're sitting there with your excess soils and you will be Certainly a recommendation is, is going to be made to do some sampling to protect everyone to really document the quality of this soil, it's the excess soils on the site. Once you've got those data, those laboratory results, you're going to be heading down a path to say that you've identified a reuse site. Um, the, the key issue here is making sure that the standards that you've compared to that you're meeting those standards, that you find an appropriate reuse site with which uh, you would be applying the same standards or making sure they meet the standards where that material will be ultimately sent to for a beneficial reuse and not going to a landfill. There are some options. Uh, it's possible to develop site-specific standards that would be prepared by a qualified professional qualified geoscientist, qualified engineer, or professional geologist, professional engineer, using a beneficial reuse assessment tool, which is available online. Risk assessments are still permitted. The, uh, within the standards, uh, the new standards, the key site conditions assist with the selection of the appropriate standards. So just like we do under OREG 153, we're looking at the conditions of shallow soil, uh, potable conditions, are we close to water bodies, non-potable water conditions, um, special considerations for placement of soils where there would be environmentally sensitive areas, um, when you're looking at uh, agricultural applications where there'll be crops grown, 
um, and also some specific criteria for salt impacted soils where the key um, goal there is not to apply salt impacted soils at a shallow depth in which uh, there could be vegetation or crops trying to grow within those salt impacted soils which would have a negative outcome. Waste designation approvals uh, exempt from approvals, the uh, hauling of ex excess soils, low risk uh, uh, on-site processing of materials, and temporary soil storage sites. So there's no need to look at getting a uh, environmental uh, ECA for these types of operations. The other uh, items that would be exempt, local waste transfer facilities could do some low risk dry soil processing and storage. And for infrastructure projects, where the beneficial reuse assessment tool is being used, you can look at certain site characteristics that would um, basically be institutional controls or engineering controls uh, relative to exposure. The other um, points I wanted to bring to light today is some recommended action items. If you're dealing with a project where you're, you know you're going to have quantities of excess soils, what you want to do is start making plans before you put a backhoe on site and start moving soil. You really need to work with a qualified professional. It is very important to understand the history of the property use because one of the key things we are concerned with here is that we're not going to come across contaminated soils, not have contaminated soils mixed with other soils, um, where we assume the site is entirely clean, we start coming across some type of contaminated zones. So one of the things we would recommend at this point um, would be to look at your soil quantities, determine what you think you may end up with as a total volume of excess soils, and look at coming up with a sampling plan and testing those soils for parameters that would be a standard list of parameters, or there may be something that comes up in uh, some research that says there may be a particular issue with metals or something, and you would need to focus on testing for those parameters. So the smaller volumes of soil, you could take up to three soil samples. As you get into larger quantities of excess soils, you'll need to take additional samples, and there's some guidance there already in the regulation. And when you have all that data, you're going to compare to the standards. And as I said earlier, you're going to look to identify these reuse sites. So it is important to do a lot of this up front to understand what you're dealing with. And of course, you're going to identify these reuse sites and prepare written agreements with those parties. So the key takeaway points here are the excess soil regulations are brand new. Nothing like this existed. Um, it may be burdensome at the beginning as this regulation is phased in. Um, many projects in the past that didn't have environmental compliance requirements, we are now looking at coming into compliance with these requirements and you need to be aware of those and planning up front to be in compliance with those regulations really before site work begins. And there'll be more phases of the excess soil regulation coming in the next few years. Before anything else, preparation is the key to success. And I, I think we can stress this quite a bit here, that on many larger scale construction projects, the idea would be to start gathering data and information up front so there's no surprises during the construction phases, which certainly could lead to, to delays. I wanna thank everyone for listening today. If you do need any assistance with excess soil management, please uh, contact me. If you need any help with this, uh, thank you for listening today.